Hey guys, welcome back to Stories at Midnight. I want to welcome everyone back, and from the title you have probably gathered that we are going to be discussing the yellow fever epidemic. This uh, was particularly nasty in the 1800s, and unfortunately it was also a very common occurrence in the 1800s. So let's talk about this epidemic, what people experienced, and how we got through it. So for a lot of our viewers, you may not know what the symptoms of yellow fever are, but we're going to go over it. So those who contracted yellow fever would often start out with chills, a really severe fever, and often an intense headache. Back pain, nausea, vomiting were also a really common occurrence. You would also experience general weakness, but you could also develop red eyes, face, or tongue with yellow fever. So as you can imagine, this would not have been a pleasant situation to have been dealing with at the time, let alone in the 1800s when medicine had not come very far in terms of advancements, and there wasn't a lot of relief available for a lot of things. While yellow fever was common in a lot of areas, um, Mostly what we're speaking about today is in the South, where it was a very common occurrence, and it was even worse in the summertime. Some even called the South the breeding ground for this disease. New Orleans, Savannah, and Charleston were some of the major cities that got hit with the disease, and other cities as well, but this does not mean the North wasn't affected, it's just that for whatever reason, well, we will find out what that reason is, the South was particularly hit hard with this disease. So for those of you that don't know, yellow fever is spread through mosquito bites. You can imagine how the South, with all that wonderful, juicy humidity, would cause, obviously, a huge outbreak when mosquitoes are so plentiful there. Now again, we are talking about the 1800s right now, okay? People did not realize that mosquitoes were what were transferring this. Now, you and I, watching this video, me making this video, are thinking, oh, the South, it's very humid. There are a lot of bugs there, especially mosquitoes. But back then, a lot of people had another theory, which is called the miasma theory, and basically what that means is bad air. They were chalking it up to bad air around them. As a result of this incorrect theory, actually Actually, a lot of gravestones were dug up, entire cemeteries were actually dug up and moved to the city outskirts and then the corpses were actually burned along with medicinal herbs in hopes to cleanse the air and then keep anything bad far from the city. Some actually recorded cannonballs being fired off to clear the air and essentially help fight it off. Uh, the worst occurrences were between 1833 and 1853, but mind you, it really wreaked havoc a little before and after that. It wasn't actually discovered that mosquitoes were the culprit for spreading yellow fever until 1900, thanks to two U.S. Army physicians. These physicians came together and they just knew that something wasn't quite right, and one of them had an inkling that it could be from a mosquito. So thanks to these U.S. Army physicians, that's how we figured this out, but guess how they figured it out? One of those physicians actually decided to experiment on himself and risk death in order to figure this out, but in the end, he was okay, and we learned that mosquitoes were the actual culprit. Now, as sad as this disease was, due to death and all the suffering, even if you didn't die, you felt awful after you got it. Believe it or not, yellow fever actually had an incredible change on our social structure. Now, as if this disease was not awful enough, causing death and immense suffering even if you didn't die, it actually affected our social structure as well. Now, it had a 50% mortality rate, so this disgusting, painful yellow fever caused all kinds of suffering, but if you made it and you were able to live through it, you had lifetime immunity. So for this reason, yellow fever was actually nicknamed the stranger's disease, as those who lived in the city likely were immune because they had already caught it. Now, the rich and elites of New Orleans in particular found a way to use this in their favor. Wealthy socialites and the rich actually used this to justify slavery. They claimed black people were naturally immune and thus argued it was humane to use them to do manual labor as this kept the whites out of spaces that were potentially dangerous and easy to contract the disease. Now this is just one small example of scientific racism in our sad history here in the U.S., but that's why I wanted to make sure that I mentioned it because I know that not a lot of people are aware of that fact in correlation to the yellow fever. 
the white people in the South absolutely knew this was false because behind closed doors, they would talk about how they wouldn't purchase slaves that were not immune. But publicly, they wanted to have the messaging that all black people were immune so that they could continue having slaves. So the people of New Orleans were actually forever changed by what was known as the Yellow Fever or Yellow Jack. Our Lady of Guadalupe was built in 1827 to act as a chapel for the victims of yellow fever. The city wanted to keep all of the bodies very far away, and so they actually would pile up the corpses outside of this church. This was all they did for them, so the corpses actually would rot under the sun and begin to smell. Which in the beginning wasn't so bad, but the corpses would actually burst under the sun, so to speak, and then the stench would go all over the city and all around, not just the church, but all over. Some of you may have heard of Marie Laveau. I'm going to do a video on her. She was a voodoo priestess and a spiritual healer. Always a humanitarian, she actually volunteered as a nurse, primarily helping slaves and those who were freed overcome the disease. She was a true Virgo at heart. Her work during the yellow fever epidemic is actually what drove her to become more involved in spirituality and aspire to become a priestess. So we did have some good things come from it, but Unfortunately, there was a lot of suffering and it's so great that now we've pretty much overcome it and the immunity that came with getting through it was obviously of some peace to the people at the time, but I wanted to go over the history of yellow fever because I felt like I wasn't fully educated on it and I felt like it had an interesting history of which I really only scratched the surface of in this video, but I hope you enjoyed it and please be sure to hit the like and subscribe button because it really helps the channel and I hope you guys have a great rest of the day.